Hey STAT students, how you doing? Time for a new video. This one's going to be about conditional probability. Now we've already learned about probability and uh, we've already learned about uh, a couple of different ways of illustrating probability, that is Venn diagrams and uh, contingency tables. This time we're going to use another way of illustrating probability, probability trees, which are particularly good with conditional probability problems. So. Uh, best way to do this is just start solving some problems and start seeing how to use these tools. So, let's look at our first problem. Marco, one of my favorite students, he's got a 60% chance of making an A on any test that he takes. Okay? He's got two tests coming up. So I want to know what's the probability that he's going to make an A on both of his two tests. And I also want to know what's the probability he's going to make an A on at least one of his two tests. Now some of you might be thinking, this is easy. I can do a Venn diagram. To... Yeah, you're right. Okay, You can use a Venn diagram to illustrate this problem. You can use a, a contingency table to illustrate this problem. But I want to show you how to use a probability tree. So, what do you do? Well, you start the tree. Okay, Let's start with Marco. Our first event is our first test. Okay, Remember last time we talked about events? All right, well, here's our, our first event. He can either make an A or he can make not an A. All right? And there are probabilities associated with these events. There's a 60% chance he'll make an A, a 40% chance he'll make yeah, something else. Next event, the second test. He can either make an A or less than an A. And again, after, that's if he makes an A the first time. Or he can make less than an A the first time and then an A, or less than an A the first time and then less than an A. So we end up with four combinations of, uh, of uh, uh, outcomes here among these two events. And remember, there are also uh, probabilities associated with these events as well. Again, 60% chance of making an A, 40% chance of making less than an A, 60% chance of making an A, 40% chance of making less than an A. All right? All straightforward. So, what's the probability of making two A's? Well, you just travel along the tree here to the two A's branch, and you say, okay, 60% times 60% gives me 36%. What's the probability that he made an A on the first one and then not an A on the second one? 60% times 40%, which gives you 24%. Okay? And on down. Please note, these probabilities must equal 100%. Okay? Because these are all the possible outcomes, all the possible combinations of outcomes of uh, these two events. So if this doesn't equal 100%, either there's a boo-boo somewhere, or you left off a, a possible outcome, which means you left off a branch in here somewhere. Uh, but in this case, yes, they do add up to 100%. And now we can answer our questions. So what's the probability he's going to make an A on both of his two tests? 36%. What's the probability he'll make an A on at least one of his tests? Well, he made an A here, so it's that. He, he made an A here, so it includes this. He made an A here, so it includes this. No A's here. So it's everything except the 16%, also known as 84%. Pretty easy uh, uh, example. And now, you don't have to use the tree here. You can use a Venn diagram if you want to to, uh, to describe this. Here's the first test. Here's the second test. 36% chance of making an A on both. Uh, this 24% means he made an A on the first one, but not on the second one, since it's not in the second uh, circle. Uh, and here's the 16% chance of uh, no A's. Uh, you can also use a, uh, a table, okay? Made an A on the first test, did not make an A. There's the complement on the first test. Made an A on the second test, did not make an A on the second test. And again, the corresponding probabilities. All right? All fine and good, right? Uh, and not too difficult an example to start with. So that's Marco. Now let's talk about uh, my other buddy, uh, Danny. Okay? Danny also has a 60% chance of making A on his first test. However, Danny's kind of emotional, and uh, the outcome of the first test actually uh, affects how he does on his later tests. Uh, the probability of making an A on his second test increases to 75% if he makes, uh, if he makes an A on the first one. Okay? If he doesn't get an A on the first one, then there's only a 50% chance of making an A on the second one. Okay? So now I want to know, what's the probability he's going to make an A on both of his first two tests? 
And also, what's the probability he'll make an A on at least one of the tests? Again, let's start this tree. Here's our buddy Danny. He'll either make an A or not an A. And the probabilities associated with that are, again, 60%, 40%. Now, next, uh, next branches. Here's our second test, just like before. Except this time, things change a little bit because, uh, if you remember, if he makes an A, he's got a really good chance of making an A the second time. Okay, and if this is 75%, this has got to be 25%. If he doesn't make an A the first time, then it's 50-50 about whether he's going to make an A the second time. Do the exact same thing we did before, multiply on through. This time, 60% of 75% gives us 45%. 60% of 25% gives us 15%. 40% of 50% is 20%, and 40% of 50% is 20%, okay? So now I can very quickly answer these two questions. The probability he's going to make an A on both of his uh, first two tests, 45%. Uh, where'd that go? There it is, 45%. What's the probability that he's going to make an A on at least one of the tests? This one, and also this one, and also this one, but not this one, okay? This is the only one where he's not making an A on either test, so it's going to be everything except 20%, also known as 80%, all right? So that's, uh, that's Danny, and again, you don't have to describe Danny's situation with the tree, although I would. You could also describe it with the Venn diagram. Uh, here's a 45% chance of making uh, an A on, the, uh, on, on both tests, 15% uh, chance of making an A on the first one, but not the second one, 20% chance of making an A on the, the uh, second one, but not the first one, and a 20% chance of not making an A at all. Uh, now. If you're using a Venn diagram, uh, remember, when you we're doing a Venn diagram, we always start with the middle one. How are we going to get that 45%? Well, the way you get the 45%, the way you find out the probability of his making an A on the first one and on the second one, is you multiply the probability of making an A on the first one times the probability of making an A on the second one, assuming you made an A on the first one. Okay? This part right here is the part that we call conditional probability, okay? There's a condition on that probability. The condition is you made an A the first time, all right? So what you have to do is you have to say, what, what's the probability of that first A? And after, after getting that probability, you just assume that that's true, and you move forward and say, now what's the probability of the second one, assuming that that is true? And uh, that's what we did. We said the probability of the first one was 60% times... 75% because there's a 75%, where is it? There's a 75% chance up there of his making an A on the second test if he did well on the first one, okay? So, uh, and there's the table again that uh, illustrates that same thing. Probability is coming from exactly the same place, okay? This here is a very important rule. It's a rule that we call the multiplication rule, okay? You got two events, A and B. The probability of both A and B happening, which we write like that, is the probability of A times the probability of B assuming that A happened, okay? The way that we usually read that is the probability of B given A, okay? Or you can go the other way around and say it's the probability of B happening times the probability of A given B, okay? You can assume that B is going to happen and see what's the probability of A uh, assuming that B is, has happened, all right? That's the multiplication rule. So, uh, if the events are independent, then, uh, then, well, then the probability of A times the probability of B given A, this would really be the same thing as the probability of, uh, of B happening, okay? So let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's look at, uh, uh, and this is only true, remember this is only true if the events are independent. And so let's look at that a little more closely. Let's look at Marco and Danny's situation. Uh, you can see with Marco, the probability of his making an A on the second test was 60%. That was actually told to us, but we can also see it because here are the two outcomes where he's making an A on the second test. 36%, 24%. Uh, if I want to know what's the probability of either this or this happening, uh, these are disjoint events, so I can just add them up, and I'll see that it's going to be 60%, right? Uh, the probability that uh, he makes an A on the second test, assuming he makes an A on the first test, 
is also 60%, and we get that because it's written right there, okay? There it is for us. So what that means is the probability that he makes an A on the first test, oh, sorry, on the second test, assuming he made an A on the first test, doesn't change, okay? It's exactly the same as just the general probability that he makes an A, the unconditional probability that he makes an A on the second test. If that doesn't change, that means that these events are independent, okay? Marco's got nerves of steel. He doesn't get flustered. He doesn't, the odds of his making an A do not change depending on past behavior. Danny, like I said, a little more emotional, okay? Uh, Danny is, uh, the probability of him making an A on the second test is 65%. He may be emotional, but he's also pretty smart. Uh, there's 45% and the 20%, the two, uh, the two uh, branches where he's making an A on the second test. And like I said, these are disjoint events, so we can just add up the probabilities. Uh, the probability that he made an A on the second test Assuming he made an A on the first test, though, is 75%. It's right there. 65%, 75%, not the same thing. Therefore, these events are not independent. Okay? That's a really easy way to tell if events are independent or not, is draw a little tree and show. Is the, uh, is the unconditional probability the same as the conditional probability? Another really easy way to tell if uh, events are independent on a tree is just to look at these branches. Are they the same? Yeah, they're independent. Are they different? Yeah, then they're not independent. Okay? All right. Okay, another problem here. On a night when there's nothing good on TV, there's a 55% chance that Kelly is going to study precalculus. If there's something good on TV, then there's only a 30% chance that she's going to study precalculus. Tomorrow night, there's a 40% chance that, that something good is going to be on TV. Okay? And then we've got four questions here, and I can't handle all four questions at the same time, so I'm just going to look at the first one, okay? What's the probability that she's going to study, uh, and this means study pre-calculus? Okay, well, uh, tree, okay? Here's Kelly. We're going to say either there's good TV or there's no good TV on, and then the next event is she studies pre-cal or she doesn't study pre-cal, okay? So now I've got my, my four branches coming out there. And uh, what's the probability there's going to be good TV? 40%. So 40% chance of good TV, which means 60% chance of uh, not none. If there's good TV on, then uh, there is a 30% chance that she's going to study pre-cal, which means there's a 70% chance she's not going to study pre-cal. Um, now, huh. If, uh, okay, and then on a night when there's nothing good on TV, there's a 55% chance that she's going to study pre-cal. So that means there's a 45% chance that she's not going to study pre-cal. And now we've got all of our conditional, well, we've got these probabilities here plus the conditional probabilities. So now we can just say 40 times 30 is 12%. 40 times 70 is 28%. 60% of 55% is 30%, and 60% of 45% is 27%. Add these up, you get 100%. Great. We got our tree all set up and now ready to start answering some questions. What's the probability she's going to study? Well, it's going to be uh, this plus this. Okay? It's going to be the probability of her studying and there's something good on TV, plus the probability that she's studying and there's not anything good on TV. And that comes out to uh, uh, 12 plus 33 is 45 percent. Uh, not sure why I wrote that as a decimal instead of a uh, percentage. Um, it doesn't matter. They're rational numbers. You can write it as a fraction if you want to. Rational numbers are rational numbers. Uh, let's look at the uh, let's look at the next question now. Oh, I'm sorry. You can also display this in a table if you'd like. Okay. Here's the event of good TV, the complement of good TV. Here's the event that she studies, the complement of her studying. Okay. And what I would do is I would start in the middle there with uh, with the 12 percent. I'd say what's the probability that there's good TV? That was uh, uh, 40%. Assuming there's good TV, given that there's good TV, what's the probability she's going to study? 30%. That's where that 12 is going to go. Okay? However, if you ask me in a situation like this where you're given conditional probabilities, I prefer the tree. Uh, question B. What's the probability that both nothing good is on TV and she's studying? <laughs> Easy. No good TV, she studies, 33%. Man, that was easy, okay? 
So the probability, that's the probability that there's no good TV, the complement of good TV, and she studies. All right. Question C, what's the probability that either something is good on TV or she's studying? Uh-huh. So this is the probability of uh, uh, good TV or she's studying. And I circled those, and that's because it's going to be everything except no good TV and she's not studying. And that's 27%, which means these must add up to 73%. So the probability there's good TV or she is studying is 73%. Remember, we can also do this by saying probability of good TV, 40, plus the probability that she's studying, uh, which we calculated to be uh, uh, 45. You add those up, and then you subtract the 12, the probability that she's doing both. Um, but after saying that, I realize that really it's easier just to add these up or just do 1 minus 27%. Okay, uh, question D. What is the probability that something is good on TV if we see that she's studying? Uh-huh. So this time, it's given that she's studying, so what's the probability that something good is on TV? Okay, so the probability that there's something good on TV given that she's studying. Well, let's see. Where are our conditional probabilities? Uh, problem. The problem is, these conditional probabilities are assuming that there's something good on TV or assuming that there's not something good on TV. This conditional probability is assuming that she's studying. So if I were just to get this straight off the tree, I would have to rearrange my tree and put studying as the first event and good TV as the second event. I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to rewrite the whole tree. So what can I do? Well. Um, I can think about uh, my multiplication rule, okay? The probability that there's something good on TV and she's studying is the probability that she's studying times the probability that there's something good on TV given that she's studying. Well, if that's the case, then I could just divide both sides of this equation by the probability that she's studying, and I'll get this, okay? Well, I can figure this out, and I can figure this out, uh, the probability that there's something good on TV and she's studying, that's just that thing right there. And the probability that she's studying is just this plus this. So that's going to be 12% divided by the sum of this, which is 45%. And that's about 27%. I think it's actually 26 and 2 thirds percent, but yeah, it's about 27%. Okay? So what does this mean? Well, it means if somebody asks me, hey, is there something good on TV? And I kind of lean back and look over and see if Kelly is studying pre-cal or not. Uh, if I see that she's studying pre-cal, so I'm assuming she's studying pre-cal, I'm going to say, mm, doubt it. Kelly's studying pre-cal. That means there's only about a 27% chance that there's anything good on TV. All right, next problem. There is a 40% probability that Carla is going to be asleep by 11 o'clock. There's a 50% chance that she's going to finish the novel she's been reading. If she finishes the novel she's been reading, there's only a 10% chance that she'll be asleep by 11 o'clock. Okay? Now, this is one that uh, I might use a, uh, a Venn diagram for, but, uh, but we're doing trees today, so let's do the tree. Okay? So, uh, okay, so let's, uh, we've got these two events, right? Uh, the event that she'll be asleep by 11 o'clock and the event that she's going to finish the novel that she's reading. So let's use the, the novel as the first event. We'll say, here's Carla. She either finishes her novel or she doesn't finish her novel. And it says 50% uh, chance she'll finish the novel. So we'll put, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. First we're going to do the other, the other branches. Uh, here's that she's asleep by 11 or not asleep. Asleep by 11 or not asleep. So there are four possibilities. Now we'll put in the, uh, uh, the, the probabilities that we see there. 50% chance of finishing the novel, which means there's a 50% chance she won't finish the novel. Uh, if she finishes the novel, there's only a 10% chance she's going to be asleep by 11 because it's a really good read. Uh, so, uh, um, so there's the 10%, and if that's 10%, this has got to be 90%. And uh, so now it says there's a 40% chance that she's going to be asleep by 11. Uh, where do I put that? I don't. 
Okay? That's not something that I put here because the 40% is actually going to be the sum of this and this. So I got to figure out what those are first. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this here. It's going to be 50% of 10%, which is 5%, and 50% of 90%, which is 45%. Okay? Now, there's a 40% chance that Carla's going to be asleep by 11 o'clock. Uh, since this is 5% here, that means the other 35% has got to go right there. And 5 plus 45 is 50, plus 35 is 85, which means the other 15 has got to go right there for them all to add up to 100%. Okay, we're almost done here. We're still missing these conditional probabilities, but we know how this works. 50% of this thing has to be 35%, which means that's 70. And 50% of this thing has to be 15%, which means that's 30%. And these have to add up to 100%, so it works. Okay? Now we got our tree totally done here, and we can start answering some questions. If we assume that she doesn't finish the novel, this branch, what is the probability that she will be asleep by 11 o'clock? Asleep by 11 o'clock, 70%. Got it. Okay? The probability that she's asleep, assuming that she doesn't finish, is 70%. Okay? Uh, if we assume that she is awake at 11 o'clock, what is the probability that she finishes the novel? If we assume that she's awake at 11 o'clock, not our first branch, it's the same problem we had last time, where now I need to move around the uh, branches, but I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to say, okay, uh, the probability that she, is, that she finishes the novel given that she is not asleep. Okay? So what I need to do is, I need to look at the probability that she finishes the novel and she's not asleep, 45. Uh, and then I need to look at the uh, probability that she doesn't finish the novel and she's not asleep, 15. Okay? Uh, those two numbers right there. Because the, this probability is the probability that both of them happen, this one here, divided by the probability that just uh, this one happens. So just she's not asleep, which is 45 plus 15. And so we end up with 45 over 45 plus 15, 45 over 60, which is 75%. Okay? So I, uh, uh, I look in there uh, at 11 o'clock to see if Carla's asleep or not. I see that she's not asleep. So the probability that she's going to finish that novel is 75%. Okay? Now, you got your probability tree, you got your contingency table, you got your Venn diagram, you got your multiplication and addition rules. When do you use what? Well, that's actually not an easy question to answer. Um, you use whatever you enjoy using, okay? I, what I do, if I'm given a bunch of conditional probabilities, chances are I'm going to use a tree, okay? If I'm not, well, no, the other time that I'm, that I'm going to use a tree is if the two events that I'm looking at, if they go in a, in a kind of an obvious order, then I'm very likely to use the tree because I'll do the first event and the second event, okay? Otherwise, there's a really good chance that I'll use a contingency table or perhaps a Venn diagram. As far as the rules go, you kind of have to know the rules. You, you pretty much have to know that, uh, that, that those are true because in, in using these, uh, uh, these illustrations, you're going to be using the rules. So I guess one way of looking at it is, if you can use these illustrations to, to illustrate probabilities, then you must know the rules because you're using them to do that. Okay? Uh, so that's conditional probability. Next video we're going to have is random variables. We're going to learn what we learned, I'm sorry, we're going to use what we learned about probability, uh, including conditional probability, to start talking about the behavior of random variables. I will See you then.